Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of our NASCAR My Driver Career Mode here on the iRacing service here as we were getting straight into the action here but coming your way today with the subscriber series races at first of all just two races left in the season as they were at Lanier as we saw RJ Dixon, Jason Smith up there in the top two. We got two Xfinity races coming your way today including uh, the Charlotte Roval towards the end and then we go to Nashville, uh, the short track at Nashville actually so I'm very excited to return to that track in the Xfinity series. We'll see what we can do there and hope to keep our championship chances alive but it is going to be a tough task to say the least and then we have a quick cup series recap no truck series races today as they only have one race remaining in their season and that will come of course in the next episode in the season finale here as you can see though in the subscriber series for this late model race it was rj dixon picking up the victory at lanier in second place was jason smith the championship leader and he would increase his championship lead and pretty much lock up the championship going into to the season finale for the late model subscriber series which pretty much guarantees it's not official but it likely guarantees jason smith who has a 17 point lead going into the final race that he will be moving up into the truck series next season so we will see how he fares in the truck series but it's not official yet he still has to hang on for one race and basically just avoid chaos here as we jump through into the nashville short track here nashville uh nashville fairgrounds it is as we would start p3 in this number 10 colleague nzxt car now as we are Pretty much going to need a top three finish, I would say, in both races today to keep any chances of a championship alive here. Uh, going into the season finale, immediately we had some contact with Jay Cook, our colleague teammate. We've had many run-ins with him this season. We haven't gotten along. We had the big run-in in Watkins Glen. We had one in Talladega. We had one in Atlanta. And now we've had one on the opening lap here in Nashville Fairgrounds as we continue to fight each other for that final spot in the Cup Series for that opening uh, in the colleague team. So hopefully we can get that ride. But right now, Jay is beating us in the points and I mean they could not be happy with our run-ins they might not take any of us here we'll have to wait and see although unfortunately it's been usually myself instigating these instances with him other than Watkins Glen I felt like it was a pretty fair play on both of us now but other than that run-in a very very calm first and opening stage absolutely nothing happened we came through to finish this first and opening stage here in P3 at the conclusion of the 14th lap so caution it was out we were P3 that's where we would line up for the start of stage two no pit stops necessary here as Austin Cindric controls the restart start there gets going quite early and catches us off guard just like the original starters were side by side with our colleague teammate of AJ Allmendinger he has no interest in moving up to the cup series so he's not even in consideration uh, to get that colleague cup ride and then our other teammate of Landon Castle he has gotten a win now but he is not going to be moving up to the cup series so it's really down between myself and our colleague teammate of Jay Cook to fight it out for that final colleague ride but odds are right now it's looking a lot more favorable that Jay is going to pick up that ride here next season so I was definitely looking over my options and we are going to have an off-season video potentially I might just actually throw the off-season into the next um, episode of the after the season finale when we move up to the cup series if we do so stay tuned on that I'm not 100% sure what's going to go on there but we were once again p3 all stage two just like we were in stage one a very very calm race again here these Xfinity races have been very calm all season long for the most part now in the cup series it gets quite wild the truck series is quite wild but the Xfinity series just not a whole lot of action happens in some of these races and we come through to cross the line p3 in stage two once again so we jump straight into the action for stage three no pit stops necessary again and i knew we had to be on it here so i wanted to get clear of my teammate of aj Almendinger. so i drove into turn one pretty hard i drove up the track a little bit and we actually make it happen we get clear and we're all over the back of austin cinder to start this final stage i felt like i'd done a good job saving my tires throughout this race so far and we're on the back bumper literally getting into them there on the exit of turn four both of us get a little bit sideways we save it we complete this first and opening lap here now still over 25 laps to go from the Nashville fairgrounds here now as we would love to win in the first NASCAR race back to this racetrack here now the short track a very very unique short track I haven't seen one quite like this very wide and then of course you got your banking that is just a, a really unique select style of just degrees of banking as well here at Nashville fairgrounds but we continue to try and put the fight to that number 22 of Austin Cindric I'm trying to keep my championship hopes alive Cindric's trying to keep his championship hopes alive he's of course in a way better position than I am so I not going to be reluctant to try and move him out of the way and you can see I was running into the back of him I had gotten into his bumper uh, quite a couple of times at this point here now on the exit of turn four we're into the back of him again 16 laps ago but here's an opportunity right here to dive one up the inside and to turn one side by side with Austin Cedric for the lead here as we exit turn two contact with the Penske driver we save it and continue on our way now as we would continue on his back bumper here on the exit of turn two a driver that is for sure to be in the cup series next season there as we have a big moment on the exit of turn two 
two, we got sideways, we hit the inside wall, we damaged the left side of the car, but I got very, very lucky. We didn't completely KO the car, so we actually still have good speed and stay ahead of the championship leader, thank goodness, of Sheldon Creed, and I'm immediately trying to get right back past AJ Allmendinger and go run down Austin Sendrick, and I had mentioned a for sure cup driver. You might be wondering, what's the situation going into the Cup Series next season when we will be in the Cup Series? So Austin Sendrick will be a fourth full-time Penske driver, so we're going to save all of the big uh, team changes that you're seeing in Real Life 2022 in Next Gen until Next Gen AI comes into play. So Penske Racing will still have Brad Kozlowski uh, next season in this My Driver career mode, but those real life changes will come into effect likely the following season, so stay tuned on that. That also means that GMS will not be present yet, and as well, uh, 2311 will still only have one car with Bubba Wallace, and you will also see that Ganassi will still be present with Kurt Busch, but there will be maybe one team that has an expansion, and of course, Colleague will be in full time. So there is some little differences, but not the huge differences that uh, you see in real life. So stay tuned. They will come into effect probably the following season. Now, as we come straight through to the final app, and you can just see, I just didn't have enough after I passed AJ Allmendinger to run down that guy right there, Austin Cindric. He would come through to lead the way through turn three out of turn four Cindric wins with three races left in the season at Nashville Fairgrounds we cross the line for a second place finish our runner-up can't complain about a runner-up finish still a strong finish but is it enough to keep us in the championship hunt that's the really the really important question here you quickly see a quick skim through of the finishing order but let's check what the point situation is do we have any opportunity here to continue to fight we're 36 points below Sheldon Creed so we are over a full race out with two races remaining. Cindric is out by eight. Harrison Burton behind by 12. Sam Mayer 25. Cook 31. We're up to six in the points though after that finish. So we are continuing to move our way up the order. And if only we didn't have those rough races to start the season, we would be in this championship battle. But unfortunately, we are not. But we have one more opportunity right here as we were ready to get the Charlotte Roval underway. Unfortunately, I started outside of the top 10 behind last season's winner at this track, Michael Cozy Jr., who beat myself in a photo finish we have a road course racing background of course coming from formula 3 overseas and here we are not yet winning a road course in nascar now as we have a weird start to say the least as michael cozy jr hit the wall before we even got to the start finish line so we were like three wide into turn one now as you can see everybody though uh keeps it relatively clean after that moment into turn one into turn two and three and four as well we had settled in just behind michael cozy jr here uh as well as daniel hammer who they were side by side actually through these couple of right handers cozy ends up actually falling in behind Hemrick, so I was trying to make a move of the right-hand side of Cozy, especially after that weird start. I said, get out of here. I want to go ahead uh, and try to get that position. So we get clear of Cozy, who's got one win so far on the season. Likely uh, will be moving up, I think, into the Cup Series next season as well, so stay tuned on that. We have four wins on the season, looking for win number five today in the Charlotte Roval, but a lot of work lies ahead of us here if we want to pull that off now, as we're going to look up the inside of Daniel Hemrick here into Oval Turn 1. He's going to come right down into me there, and we make contact. I'm not sure if he just did didn't notice me down there but he just came right across my nose and we made contact thankfully we don't really pick up any damage and we continue on our way but what in the world was Daniel Hemrick doing right there is really the big question now as we dive down into this bus stop chicane here looking to the right hand side just about of Justin Allgaier a really good run but not going to be quite good enough to be able to make a move on that JRM number seven branch Chevrolet Camaro so we would settle in behind him briefly but I would send one up the inside here through the turn five six area here uh, with 14 laps to go as you guys know road courses only have one stage caution and that usually comes at about the halfway point so expect a caution around lap six or seven in this race now a lap later josh berry going very defensive here into the same set of right handers where we pass his teammate of allgaier i just breeze right on by on the left hand side and we are continuing to move our way forwards here now up into p9 a big moment right there though as i almost drove right into the back of sam Mayer, and i got on the brake heavily i hit the grass with my left rear tire lost control somehow saved it and we would continue on our way to a lap later where our teammate of Landon Castle would have a big shunt goes into the grass crashes into the barrier and he is going to be out of this race here in the Charlotte Roval a huge choke from Landon Castle a replay of that right there he, all by himself he just went wide missed the apex boom into the barrier he goes and out of the race goes Landon Castle a very easy mistake to make I've made that mistake myself many many times but this was also the same lap that actually NASCAR would call the caution so they did it well uh, earlier than the halfway point here in this race actually because they were trying to get a little bit more racing 
doing here in this final stage. So uh, we would gather back up and we were up in P8 for the next restart and I was not happy to see Castle crash because that meant I was restarting on the right hand side and we had a very tough time on that right hand side on the original start and I was expecting the same thing right here as the AI are so weird because they have to take the chicane for the restarts but nonetheless we get back underway here now with just eight laps remaining. Jay Cook, our colleague teammate leading at this point over Harrison Burton and you look at drivers trying to keep their championship hopes alive. Burton about 10 points behind Creed and same for Cendric there who makes contact with Sam Mayer in a turn too. They both keep it going in the right direction but both Burton and Cendric need to be looking to beat Sheldon Creed to have a chance to go fight for a championship next episode in Phoenix. We make contact there with Cendric into turn three uh, or four that was now as thank goodness he saved it and we all continue on our way as you can see side by side battles going all the way to the back of the grid here now as we come through the turn five six area now the double right hander as we get ready to make that transition onto the oval of the track here now as you continue to see Jay Cook out in front he was already pulling a gap actually to everybody now as Harrison Burton currently runs in that second position I was able to actually find my way up the inside of Austin Cindric here through oval one and two as you can see look at the lead Cook has already he is long gone now as we get clear of the Penske driver of Austin Cindric as we dive down into this bus stop uh, here chicane on this back straightaway now as we go through the left hander through the right hander Cindric actually tags me in the right rear there may be a little bit of a uh, hey I didn't appreciate you running into the back of me at the start of the lap he wanted to let me know about it but we continue on our way nonetheless here to seven laps to go we caught Sam Mayer kind of sleeping right there get up the inside of uh, him into turn one and now we are going to move now up into the sixth position very close quarters racing there with the JRM driver and we pass him Creed gets shoved wide by Gibbs and we get past Creed as well and move up an extra position Position. And then moments later, Daniel Hamrick makes the same mistake that Landon Castle would make earlier. He goes way off the track into the barrier, and that would be his day pretty much over. He would actually repair his car and get out, back out on the track. But then, as well, Sheldon Creed, who was in behind me, was now under attack from Austin Cindric and Sam Mayer. And they both find a way to get past him into the oval section of the course. So now, Creed has given up like three, four spots here at the beginning of this final stage. As I was on the attack here, making a move up the inside of Ty Gibbs now. And we continue on the way forwards. So we're up inside the top five now up into fourth place but Harrison Burton who's in second and Creed falling down towards the bottom half of the top ten this is going to bring Harrison Burton and even potentially Austin Cindric who's now ahead of Creed right into this championship battle both within ten points I think of Creed going into that final race in Phoenix race but I knew at this point my championship hopes are dwindling now as Creed is still having a good enough run to keep himself potentially a full race above myself going into Phoenix and obviously that would mathematically take us out of championship contention what a season it has been for us. Nonetheless, we've had one heck of a last bit of the season. We've won four races. We've had some runner-up finishes. We've had top five runs. But unfortunately, the portions of the beginning of the season that went so wrong at Daytona, just the first three, four races in general that we just sucked at other than the win at Martinsville, uh, are going to be what ends up taking us out of championship contention here today in the penultimate race of the season. It's hard to believe we've already come to the second to last race of the season, which was shortened, of course, to to the pandemic at the beginning of this season here in the storyline. So, Jay Cook leading the way here on this final lap. He's picked up a win this season and is fighting against us for that final ride that is open for Kolig in the Cup Series next season. And right now, he's making a good case to put himself in that car as I make a big mistake right there. Got into the concrete barrier, not gaining any time on AJ Elmendinger. And now we might be under attack from Ty Gibbs as we come through Oval 1 and 2 on this final lap. We have still a comfortable gap, so we should be okay here as we come through Oval 2 down this back trader towards that bus stop chicane for the final time. Cook leads the way through there over Harrison Burton, over AJ Elmendinger as we come through in P4, being very cautious and defensive. Gibbs nearly runs into the back of me. I was surprised he was able to get there, but you see Cook nearly a four second lead as he comes through out of Oval Turn 4 for the final time into this final chicane. It is going to be our colleague racing teammate and rival, we could say, Jay Cook coming through to win in the Charlotte Roval in the second to last race of the season. Harrison Burton is going to really spice up the championship now as he gets a second place finish. Almendinger P3, myself P4, Cindric holding off Gibbs actually got past him on the final lap. An extra point to Cindric in Creed did get past Sam Mayer, but nonetheless loses points to most importantly Cindric as well as Harrison Burton. But unfortunately, we would be eliminated out of the championship contention. We are now 33 points back, which is just over a full race out. Cindric and Burton are six and seven points behind. 
Sheldon Creed going into the championship finale. It is going to come down to those three. Jay Cook still has a chance to win, but it is pretty unlikely here. So we'll see what happens. A quick Cup Series recap. Bubba Wallace would win in Atlanta for the second to last race of the season. Both Rick Ware Racing drivers of James Davison and David Schildhouse would finish inside the top 10. And the other driver of Cody Ware was 22nd place. But nonetheless, that leaves us just one episode remaining in the prologue here of Chapter 2. And then we move in to Chapter 1 of, you know, the main series, basically, here, which I'm very excited for. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this ride so far. It's unfortunate now we are officially out of championship contention. No matter what, we cannot win the championship at Phoenix Raceway, but we've had one incredible rally back from in the mid-teens of points now towards the top five in points at the end of the season. And of course, with four wins, we have made a good case to be in the Cup Series next season. And I'll have some news coming on that soon on where we could land in the Cup Series next season as a rookie in that Gen 6 Cup Series car. But that does it for me. I will see you guys in the next one. Love to hear who do you think is going to win between Creed, Burton, and Cedric, all separated by seven points in the championship finale at Phoenix Raceway. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day, everybody.